Hello, everybody. This is Martha Alter Hines. And I am making this video today to talk about the energies in the upcoming new moon in Virgo, but also to talk about some pretty relevant energies that are happening now and then moving toward that new moon, because they're all very tied to each other and have a really similar theme. Um, the, th the themes that are really alive for me are alive in the astrology right now. And then definitely also in that new moon. Um, so yeah, it's really beautiful what I'm feeling and what's feeling alive here to talk about. So I'm excited to drop into it with you. So I'm recording this video on September 3rd, Sunday. Um, uh, I'm in California and right now it's almost 1 PM when I'm recording this Pacific time. So there's a, a bunch of things happening astrologically right now that all again, tie together in a certain way. So today, September 3rd, in just a few hours, um, Venus is, which has been going retrograde between the earth and the sun is about to go direct just a few hours from now. And by the time you are watching this video, probably it's already, Venus will probably already be going to direct. It's going direct at 12 degrees of Leo. Um, and then <clears throat> tomorrow, September 4th, uh, and for some of you, it's, this is happening on, actually both things are happening on September 4th, depending on where you are in the world. Actually, most of the world, it's happening both on September 4th. But for me, tomorrow, <laughs> September 4th, Jupiter is going retrograde at 15 degrees of Taurus. And then, and we already have Uranus going retrograde. We already have Saturn, which has been going retrograde for a while. You know, we have a lot of, we have Pluto going retrograde and Capricorn, a lot of the planets going retrograde or about to go retrograde. And the big, 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 big theme that I'm really feeling called to is that a lot of these, a lot of the energies that are particularly alive right now, astrologically, are the earth signs and planets in earth signs. So again, uh, you know, Jupiter is about to go retrograde tomorrow in Taurus. Mercury is already retrograde in Virgo. It's about to be conjunct the sun in Virgo and actually it is about to be precisely trining Jupiter as Jupiter goes retrograde and then the sun will trine Jupiter as well and then this is all leading up to the new moon which is happening in Virgo again an earth sign and within hours of the new moon um, Mercury will go direct near the new moon in Virgo so lots and lots and lots of earth energies and on top of that <laughs> um as venus goes direct and i'll show you this the chart for this in a second as venus goes direct later today for me september 3rd um it's going to be opposite hygia and eros the the asteroid Eros. So I've talked about this dance happening between Venus and Eros and Hygieia before, because when, when Venus went retrograde, it was also exactly opposite Eros. And all three of these um, planetary beings are going retrograde basically around at the same time. So they're kind of, they're tracking each other as they're going retrograde, they're, they're opposite each other pretty much this whole time. And so Venus was exactly opposite Eros as she went retrograde and she's going to be still opposite Eros and Hygieia as she goes direct. So again, I'll show you the chart in a second. I'll drop into what all of this means for me um, or what's arising for me, but Venus rules Taurus and Venus in Leo to me is very much tied in with our sexuality, our sensuality, our creative life force, um, 
and definitely, definitely tied in with our bodies. So even though Venus is in a fire sign, I associate Venus with Leo also as being very tied to our body wisdom and um, similar to these earth sign things, which I'll drop into more in a minute. But then especially with Venus being opposite, Eros and Hygieia, I mean, that's just like I've talked about in other videos, the, the Hygieia Eros dance for this whole year pretty much to me is this major opportunity for us to redo our relationship to our bodies in general, our sexuality in general, to come back into a sacred relationship with our sexuality and our body wisdom and uh, our well-being as beings of earth and beings of our bodies. Yeah. So actually, so I'll bring up the chart now, and then there's, there's more themes around that I want to drop into. All right. So as usual, I have a lot of things on here because I look at a lot of <laughs> different things in astrology. Uh, if it's too complicated, just ignore it. But here are the things. So this is the, this is the these are the transits right this minute as I am recording this in Colombia, California. Um, one thing that just just occurred, and that actually also also highlights the same theme of the body wisdom being really alive, is that Ceres, the dwarf planet was just exactly precisely conjunct the south node of the moon at 25 libra and um you know there's so much more there around what series is but one component of who series is is she's an earth mother energy and i feel her very tied to our womb wisdom um and our body wisdom and being on the south node i mean again there's so many layers there but i i feel that energy i've been feeling that energy super strongly because my my natal north node happens to be 24 52 of libra and so you know as series is on the south node of the moon she's also on my north node <laughs> so it's pretty extra strong for me right now uh but what i what i feel in that series energy is is this remembering of our womb wisdom the remembering of ourselves as body and earth and also many layers of grief that might arise around our relationship with our womb our relationship with mothering or mothers or our mother or our children or you know if you do or don't have children or did have whatever anything <laughs> there's so many so many possibilities there but series definitely is related to grief and she's related to unconditional love and she's related to loss and letting go and um letting go even when you don't want to and yet it's needed and and again for me the womb and um, that massive all abiding earth mother energy. So many, many components there, but that is that did just occur uh, or it's occurring now ish. It's well, no, sorry, it's about to occur. <laughs> I'm recording this. It's right uh, right now about to occur. Uh, and like I said, Venus is about to go direct at 12 degrees of leo um tomorrow jupiter is going to go retrograde at 15 degrees of taurus um and then as like i was saying as venus goes direct it is going to be it is currently you know pretty much exactly opposite hygia and eros and more loosely Chericlo also um and and i would and i can just add in also juno <clears throat> and venus are kind of doing a a dance together for a while right now which brings in an element of the 
the inner sacred union for me. Um, so there's this theme of us, you know, Hygieia and Eros and Chericlo being together much of this year. This this theme of uh, us coming into a time of healing our relationship to our sexuality and coming into more of a sacred sexuality resonance in ourselves um, and then embodying <clears throat> and coming in touch with the wisdom of our bodies and the wisdom of ourselves as earth and Jupiter being in Taurus and about to go retrograde in Taurus along with Uranus being in Taurus and already just last Sunday having gone retrograde in Taurus you know that's again highlighting this theme of us um, needing to really be in touch with ourselves as earth and ourselves as bodies yeah just over and over and over and over and over and over and over again same 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 theme here okay and then let me pull up the um new moon chart <clears throat> so this is what the new moon will be like for me it'll be on september 14th for lots of you in other parts of the world it'll be september 15th uh and the new moon itself will be at 21 58 of virgo 21 degrees 58 minutes of virgo so almost 22 degrees of virgo and this new moon will be, among other things, almost exactly, well, within one degree and one minute. No, less than, okay. It's basically exactly one degree <laughs> trining um, Uranus. So this new moon, which we're moving toward now, you know, itself, in and of itself, just given the fact that it's in Virgo, but then also given, especially given the fact that it is trining Uranus in Taurus, again, is this repeated theme of us coming mm -hmm. into a new relationship, a new way of being with ourselves as the intelligence of the divine, as earth, as ourselves, as our bodies, um, and really owning that i want to say but also doing this in a new way doing this in a different way and um yeah i'm going to stop sharing because there's there are a few things i want to drop into with that so i have been <clears throat> i've been talking with ann bromley a lot and Anne was a speaker in the Rebecoming the One Symposium. She does work with uh, sacred womb wisdom. And a lot of you loved her talk and a lot of you came to her workshop, which was part of the symposium. And actually it's still available if you're interested in it. Um, not very expensive. And, and then a lot of you attended a free five-day event that she gave after the symposium and then a lot of you actually joined also her on more ongoing workshops so i have been um in the background in my own private sphere doing a lot of the work with her also and it is radically changing my life um truly <laughs> so uh actually starting this thursday I'm going to be doing, uh, we're still feeling into exactly how we're going to be, how we're feeling called to do it. But what I, I was getting, I was shown a very clear vision of doing regular videos on this YouTube channel, my, where you're listening right now, um, free videos with Anne, probably once a month called womb wisdom updates. And I wanted to, I'm feeling called to just drop into a little bit of why and what that is and what that feels like even in my own body and my own self in my own womb <laughs> um as i've been you know i've had uh, more space after the symposium and my life has slowed down it might not look like it but <laughs> my life really actually has slowed down 
significantly <laughs> since the symposium by my standards it has and um anyway i've had space and time to start to drop into this this work with Anne and um uh a lot of it is not exactly new for me yet there's something about the way she does it and the way that i'm in this exact moment in my life receiving it that is radically changing my life uh and so what i feel in my body and in my praying it's with the spirit world and with my own self is that the coming down into our bodies and then re coming into a, an into a new relationship with uh, either our physical if we have physical wombs or even if we don't no matter what gender we are when we come into this new way of being with ourselves where our our whole body but including the womb is a sacred beautiful temple being um an alive conscious part of ourselves that has its own exquisite presence and exquisite wisdom when i am dropping into that and really coming into that in myself it, it, it i feel it i can feel that it that way of being uh aware and conscious and embodied absolutely can change the world and certainly is currently changing my life <laughs> i mean no question um and it is so incredibly relevant to what's happening astrologically so again series being on just you know right now being conjunct the south node um all of these planets being in these earth signs jupiter going retrograde in taurus um mercury going retrograde in virgo this new moon coming up on and on right it's just uranus being in taurus having just gone retrograde it's so much supporting us right now to come back into our body venus having been you know having gone direct in leo opposite your uh eros and hygia and Terek, all the things i just mentioned all of them <clears throat> bring us back to our bodies and our bodies as these literal temples virgo um and bring us back to the reality that i don't want to say all of us but i would say in general probably most most all of us <laughs> have have been indoctr indoctrinated for lack of a better word to live um disconnected from our bodies or out of sync with the the true rhythm of, of our bodies you know we have tended probably to move much much faster than the actual rhythm of our bodies and the earth itself and and we bypass the wisdom of our our knowing and our bodies our hearts our wombs our the whole being really actually and we we what we operate on is instead of being coming from this wisdom of our being we're operating from a sense of what we think mentally we should do or the society is expecting us to do or you know in order to pay our bills we need to do xyz thing it's a matter of survival you know that kind of a thing um and these energies are really a beautiful pivotal moment i feel for us to be coming back pretty profoundly into this wisdom of our bodies our beings our wombs our hearts um but not only like not only our mind and our heart right really our whole body our whole, whole being and to be grounded it's like so perfect that's what that's what the womb wisdom really feels 
why it feels so important to me because it, it fully grounds me right here. And I, and I am a relatively grounded person. I mean, I have, you know, very strong earth energies, but, um, there's something the component of adding in the womb wisdom, like brings me all the way right down here, right here. <laughs> and I can be connected, you know, everywhere too, but, but I can be right here. Um, yeah. And so there's just a few more components of that, that I want to name because they're really beautiful. And and I, I can feel my work shifting. I can feel my whole way presence, even um, that I'm being called into just shifting in a lot of different ways. So I want to name some of these things and see if they resonate for you. Um, and if they don't, that's great too. <laughs> so one component I've already kind of mentioned is the slowing way down <laughs> which i find really interesting that i'm feeling it, it it's really really fascinating to me that we have the north node now in aries my south node is in aries and aries is ruled by mars which i certainly we would not associate with being slow <laughs> if anything it's fast <laughs> Um, and if you've watched me and what I've been doing in the world at all, you can tell probably that my mode of being typically is pretty fast. Again, my South node in Aries and my South node is ruled by my Mars in Aquarius. So I can be really, really, really fast, like boom, <laughs> it's done. Um, and efficient and, you know, and even the Virgo energy that I have really strongly, it can be very just efficient, just get it done good enough it's done <laughs> okay i mean high quality but like um I, I don't linger i just i just do it let's move on <laughs> right um so that's definitely really strong in me and and there is this really fascinating thing that's dawning on me as the north node is now in aries it's something i want to explore over the next coming months and 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 i love to have conversations with all of you about it. And I, I'm hoping to have conversations with people I'm going to be doing interviews with about this, but you know, there's, there's a, what the spirit world has been saying to me a lot is of course, there's a divine version, a divine template of each archetype and each set of energies. So I've said this in lots of different places. Heather Ensworth talks about this a lot in a really beautiful way. Um, actually, Heather just recently, yesterday, put out a video, uh, of an interview with Anne Baring, where they talk about this a lot. Um, and I interviewed Anne. Anyway, I love, love, love Heather, and I love, love, love Anne. And, and so, yeah, I loved that video. Um, but what Heather talks about a lot in in her work is the processional cycle and the the different ages we've been in right so <clears throat> so we are as many of you probably realize we're in that way of thinking we're moving into the age of aquarius moving out of the age of pisces and into the age of aquarius but what came before the age of pisces was the age of aries okay and heather wrote an entire book on this and you know there's lots more to say about this but on a basic gist level when we were in the age and before the age of Aries was the age of Taurus okay but in the age of Aries there there was a kind of I would my words would be there was a divine template for what the age of Aries could be promoting and could be really um helping us move into in terms of our relationship to this Aries archetype. And maybe it did some of that, but in a lot of ways, it, it really uh, became quite unbalanced. And the, the version of the Aries energy that was maybe more predominant was not a healthy version of Aries. And that 
the way that Heather puts it is, you know, that unbalanced Aries energy has carried over from the age of Aries into the age of Pisces and is still present with us. And it's, it's a lot of what we are now, a lot of us wanting to rectify and, um, come back into balance with so you know i just spoke with chris skidmore last night uh, and did a video with him which a lot of you have probably already seen where where we're talking kind of touching on a lot of these themes that there's there's a beauty in each of these archetypes there's a beauty in the aries archetype there's this divine version of the masculine for example right just like there's a divine version of the feminine and um And so when I've been going into prayer and actually I was channeling something for those of you in the membership last on our, uh, our gathering last Friday, where what came through was, was all about being with essentially the divine presence of that Aries energy and Aries energy is, it has to do with being like existing <laughs> and it has to do also with you know lots and lots of lots lots of different things but like the impulse to to exist and the impulse to act the impulse to move forward but what was so interesting interesting and I need to continue to sit with this cuz my, my human brain is still not totally getting it but what came through in that channeling was they were really focused on this north node being in aries but then they brought us back to the slowness and the natural rhythms of our bodies and of earth. And so my human brain wants to move from Aries to Taurus in order for that to make sense. But what I'm also sitting with is this feeling of, well, Aries doesn't need to be fast. Aries is, is an energy of, I exist, I am which in its maybe in a certain divine form is actually can be very slow <laughs> potentially right i would love your thoughts on that but that that's what i was feeling when i was channeling that was it was the spirit world was so focused on aries energy and slowness at the same time which in our conception of astrology doesn't fit <laughs> but I could feel it in my being and I could see it in what they were showing me that it, it does fit so there's something about um the north node being in Aries right now that's that feels like it's even even that is somehow supporting us just like you know Jupiter being in Taurus Uranus being in Taurus all of these things being in these earth signs Somehow, even the North Node in Aries to me is feeling like it's actually helping us to come back to the divine essence of what Aries actually is, what being actually is. And that that Aries energy, when it's out of balance, is maybe overly fast and maybe overly aggressive and violent and all that. But at its divine essence, is is in alignment with simply being like the spark of source that starts the new life right like the seed that goes bing um and that in and of itself can actually be very quiet and very still in a certain way like when you light a match like that's Aries energy is the lighting the match maybe feels fast in a sense, but then, you know, you're sitting there holding that match and that can be a very still experience. Like when you, let's say maybe you light a candle. Well, what, I mean, this is, again, this is me just thinking out loud because I'm still trying to understand what came through in that channeling. But when we light the candle, a lit candle is often something we sit and just are still with. 
if we're meditating or whatever, that's a really stereotypical thing to do is to just, just be with a, a simple candle, right? But the, the, the light is very much an Aries energy. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm getting nods from the spirit world that maybe that's what they're trying to say is that, you know, this, the essence of the Aries energy can be very still when we come to the reality of that energy as just that being anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. And then one other theme related to all of this that I'm feeling really called to talk about, because I haven't actually said this in any of my videos, but it's feeling more and more and more important to say this out loud. I love it. Um, yeah. And I haven't heard anybody say this before, but it, it anyway, super important to me, <laughs> more and more important to me. So I'm going to share it with you. Uh, so another thing quite related to all of these earth energies in particular, and, you know, the new moon being in Virgo, trining Uranus and all of the things, all of the things I just mentioned. Okay. Um, something that keeps arising for me in my consciousness and my being and my praying, especially as I'm moving toward hosting the uh, infinite soul wisdom astrology 101 course what i keep getting reminded of in my prayers is it's like the spirit world just keeps laughing and they keep showing me the cosmos and our our solar system and they keep again laughing and saying it's all alive like how do you not realize that <laughs> so and then what they show me is um they show me they remind me of what i feel like for example when i'm in scotland which is where my family is from and in particular you know in the western isles of scotland which very specifically is where my family is from um and on the very specific island where my family is from Okay, when I'm there, and maybe some of you have had these kinds of experiences, I, I know some of you have actually, because you've shared them with me. Um, and actually, I'm going to be talking, anyway, I'll get back to that in one second. Okay, too many thoughts. Uh, when I am in Scotland, but also when I'm just in natural places in many parts of the world, including here in Goleta, California, um, The earth is incredibly alive, right? The rocks, the rocks are so alive in that part of Scotland for me. I mean, they literally talk. <laughs> they have a, a, an ancient wisdom and an ancient knowing. Um, the oceans are so alive. The trees are incredibly alive. And there are these layers of beings who are so alive. They are very real. And, and what I was about to say that I'll say now is I'm actually going to be, after I record this video, I'm going to be recording a video for the, the series, the four month series that I'm hosting that a lot of you have joined um, where I'm in each month focusing on one set of spirit beings that I have a particularly strong relationship with. So in this month, September of 2023, I'm focusing on earth beings. Last month, we focused on light beings, unicorns, and angels. This month, I'm focusing on earth beings. So I'm actually going to be recording today a video for those of you in that series. And all of you are welcome to join the series if, if you're feeling called to do that about you know i'll go more much more into depth in in my relationship with these many 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 realms of existence of these earth beings um next month will be ocean beings and the month after that will be inner earth beings 
so so anyway back to the cosmos um so what the spirit world shows me is they say okay so you know from personal experience how alive the earth is right the rocks are the oceans are um that this earth is a being it's not just an inanimate object that doesn't make any sense how can we come we're alive we're conscious how can we arise from something dead that literally doesn't work (laughs) for me (laughs) um and the same thing is true well where did the earth come from the earth is part of the cosmos right it where else is it (laughs) if it's not part of the cosmos Mm -hmm. so of course everything in the cosmos is equally alive to the earth it makes no sense none zero sense how could the earth be the only alive thing in all of space doesn't compute for me right how how again like if we are alive and conscious how is that possible on a dead planet it can't the earth can't be dead (laughs) it's not dead we know it's not dead and therefore same same thing how in the world could anything really in the cosmos be actually not alive so i'm kind of i'm saying all this as more kind of like planting a seed um to see what resonates for you and maybe what sparks for you and what comes alive for you in that but it's feeling so, 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 so crucial in my own relating with the cosmos, my own relating with astrology and my own holding space for all of us or all of you who feel called to be part of my community in any way, whatever, even just listening to these videos, um, <clears throat> that that these beings are beings they're actually alive just like you know if you've sat under a tree and felt the aliveness like have you ever been to the redwoods or the sequoias or wherever you are in the world i mean there are just so many powerful beyond words parts of this planet right and i'm guessing you've been to at least one of those (laughs) um so yeah if you just put yourself in that place you know wherever you've been that where you felt something along those lines of like i can say when i've been to the redwoods or the sequoias here in california um I can't even put that into words. The, the the ancientness of their presence, you know, redwoods and sequoias. A lot of them have been alive for what two, three thousand years. They have been alive for two or three thousand years. They are actually ancient, <laughs> and they are literally alive, right? And I can feel it when I'm when I'm there when I'm under the redwoods and um especially if there aren't a lot of people around i can feel their consciousness um yeah and i'm guessing y- you have probably had similar experiences in in one form or another so same thing right if the redwoods are that alive and that conscious how in the world is Saturn not alive or our moon or Pluto or Pluto's moon or uh, Chericlo or the Andromeda galaxy or whatever it is, right? That they, they just are. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's feeling really important to name that. I haven't, I have I haven't heard, I don't hear people talk about it quite in that way. I'm I'm sure there are people who do, um, but it just feels really, really important to name it out loud. I mean, Heather Ensworth definitely in her own way talks about things 
like that. Um, I'm sure other people do as well. But in the, the Astrology 101 course, the Infinite Wisdom, Infinite Soul Wisdom, <laughs> Astrology 101 course, that is a big component of how I'm going to be holding that space is that, is that, you know, it's what I am shown by the spirit world is, I've said this in other videos, that course is meant to be, it is going to be a literal portal of remembering, a literal grounding into our body wisdom probably also our womb wisdom our heart wisdom our mind wisdom our body wisdom our soul wisdom our spirit no, our cosmic wisdom all of it grounded in a safe container so that this this way of being with the aliveness of the wisdom of infinity really can come back into our being into our bodies and and we can be present as that wisdom that is unique to you unique to me unique to each of us that's what our world is really really needing and so that's that's gonna that's the point of the the course um yeah, I'm so excited about it. And a bunch of you already signed up and I'm really, 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 really happy and excited about that. And um, and actually along those lines, for those of you who have signed up already and or those of you who do sign up before September 19th, 2023, uh, I'm going to be holding a free meet and greet so you guys can start to connect with each other. Uh, and um, yeah, I would love to have you there live. I'll also record it. Uh, but yeah, I'll be, I'm uploading preliminary resources for you. And um, the course doesn't start officially until February, but I already, I'm like, I want to start, <laughs> but the spirit world is very clear. It needs to start in February. So, um, but then they're showing me other things that, that I can be doing with you all or for you all this fall. And um, yeah, the first thing will be this meet and greet on September 19th and then uploading these preliminary resources I'll be doing I'll be uh recording a couple of videos for you to get you started on your journey and then I'll also be hold, holding a um <clears throat> a December not equinox solstice <laughs> a December solstice gathering for all of you It'll be free for people who have signed up uh for the course and um, and I'm doing a year ahead, uh, 2024 astrology, the astrology of 2024 workshop, which again, will be, it'll be open to any of you if you want to join, but it'll be free for people who have signed up for that course. And it that, um, I'm creating a PDF of all a bunch of the transits of 2024 for all of the main planets, the centaurs, the asteroids, or the asteroids that I work with, which is a lot of them and a lot of the Kuiper Belt objects and Sedna. So that is going to be, I'm going to be uploading that PDF for all of you who have signed up for the course in the next week or two, because I'm almost done with it. And also it'll be available for all of you who sign up for the Astrology of 2024 workshop, but that'll be happening in probably December. Um, and what else do I want to mention? Uh, yeah. Also, for those of you who have signed up for the course, you get a 25% discount, you know, on lots of workshops that I have already held with other people or by myself. And also the two workshops coming up in the next few weeks, super, 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 super fun and exciting, both of them. And you're all invited to them, um, whether or not you're part of the Astrology 101 course. So you probably have already heard about them, but uh, they are on September 30th slash October 1st, depending on where in the world you are, I'll be holding a Shiva Shakti asteroid workshop with Daniel Sawelu. And then a couple weeks later on October 14th, 15th and October 28th, 29th on the, the days of the two eclipses happening in October, I'm holding an eclipse, like a sacred ceremonial kind of workshop uh, that'll be, have two parts with Chris Skidmore. 
So both, both um, workshops, the one with Daniel and the one with Chris are $45 each. I've tried to make the pricing relatively inexpensive. Um, and again, those of you in my membership get a 20% discount on those. Those of you who have already signed up for the Astrology 101 course get a 25% discount on both of those. Um, and yeah, and I have the the Earth beings component of the the Soul Allies Earth. Oh my goodness, Spirit Allies <laughs> series. Um, I'll be uploading later today. Uh, I have the Vesta workshop coming up in the Goddess series with Farina Burrell on Tuesday. Lots of things happening. <laughs> um, and two free gatherings coming up, one next week on September 14th, and then one uh, where I'll be giving a free talk on the goddesses in the eclipses. And then, and then really fun, definitely sign up for a free eclipse panel discussion and Q and A, which will be happening on Tuesday, September 26th. And I'll be co-hosting that with Jonathan Co, who lots of you love, 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 loved in the Rebecoming the One Symposium. He's just such a wonderful human. Um, and the other panelists also are going to be Verena Burrell, Michelle Dench, and Jordan Smith. And yeah, just lots of you commented how much you loved the panel that Jonathan co-led with me uh, in the Rebecoming the One Symposium. And um, Verena and Jordan were both part of that panel also. And then Michelle was also part of the symposium. And yeah, I think it's going to that I'm really excited about that panel. I think it'll be really fun. And you're welcome to submit questions ahead of time. Um, we will record it so you can be there live or not, but register even if you're not going to be there live and I'll make sure to send you the recording. Um, I think that's it. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of things. Uh, I swear I, this is slower than I have been <laughs> in my life, but I will be slowing down even more. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. I think those are all the things. Uh, oh, one more thing <laughs> for those of you who do sign up for the astrology 101 course, you, depending on whether you choose the, um, the sliding scale option or the full option, you get at least one free one-on-one -on -one session with me. So lots of you are already been doing those sessions. Um, if you haven't signed up for that session, certainly do. And if you uh, are interested in the course, you can sign up and you can have that free session whenever you want after you have signed up. So yes, many options. If any and all of them call to you, I would love to have you at any and all of them that call to you. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Please be in touch anytime and um, sending you big hugs. I, I wish and hope in this time that we really can each and all come into this way of being that is in rhythm with our bodies and, and ourselves as earth and our sacred sexuality and a healing around our sexuality and a healing with our bodies and um yeah come into like joy and reverence and being in love with ourselves um yeah and feeling and knowing our own beauty on every every level deep and yes that's what i hope for you in this time and i hope for me in this time newman in virgo we are these beautiful infinite sacred temples of earth and divine as one so thank you and i will see you soon